Eat help, help. Oh! The Jell-O program, coming to you from the new NBC studios in San Francisco, starring Jack Benny. With Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with We Did It Before. Friends, the next time you have Jell-O for dessert, see if you don't notice that it's better than ever. Because today, that famous flavor that has made Jell-O America's favorite gelatin dessert is even richer and more delicious, thanks to Jell-O's new and exclusive process. This new process, you know, locks in the Jell-O flavor, protects it for your enjoyment, heightens the pleasure that Jell-O gives you. Now, more than ever before, you'll find real joy in Jell-O. You'll thrill to its bright, shimmering beauty, and you'll know a new delight in its tangy, zestful flavor. Flavor as refreshing as the juicy, ripe fruit itself. But prove to yourself what tempting goodness you get in Jell-O's new locked-in flavor. Open a package of Jell-O. Notice that there's no telltale aroma, no sign of escaping fragrance and flavor. Then dissolve the tiny Jell-O particles and notice how Jell-O's captive goodness comes pouring out. Delightfully good, gloriously rich. Get Jell-O tomorrow and discover what a lot of extra enjoyment you get in Jell-O's locked-in flavor. We did it before, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, we are assembled here today to dedicate the new NBC building in San Francisco. Yes, sir. So it is only fitting and proper on this momentous occasion that we bring you a man who was also present when Robert Fulton dedicated the first steamboat, <laughs> Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you. Jello again. This is Jack Benny talking through a brand new microphone. And Don, I'm in too good a mood today. Pardon to... me, Mr. Benny. Hello, Mac. Hello, Mac. Testing. Testing. <laughs> Hello, Mac. Testing. Okay, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> uh, Jello again. This is Jack Benny Doff talking. And Don, I'm in too good a mood today. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Wilson. Hello, Mac. Hello, Mac. <laughs> Testing. Testing. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Ahem. Uh, Jello again. This is Jack Benny talking. And Don, I'm in too good a mood today. Hello, Steve. Hello, Steve. <laughs> Hello, Steve. Wait a minute, what happened to Mac? He just got drafted. <laughs> oh, I was wondering. Anyway, Don, I am really in a marvelous mood today. Here we are in this beautiful building, and it sure is a thrill being here for the opening of these new studios, isn't it? Yes, Jack, I've never seen such a gorgeous layout. The surroundings are so luxurious, uh, and the page boys and ushers have such swanky uniforms. You think the page boys are swanky? Don, you know that apple machine they've got backstage? Yes. Well, I got an apple out of it just now, and the worm was wearing a tuxedo. <laughs> I didn't mind that so much, but he looked me straight in the eye and said, you better be good tonight, buddy. <laughs> There's a worm I hate. So fresh. And another thing, Jack, I've never seen such courteous and obliging staff. Well, the service is simply wonderful. Service is right. Don, have you, uh, have you noticed the beautiful elevator operators they have here? Oh, I sure have. Well, talk about service. I stepped into the elevator a little while ago, and the girl said to me, up, down, or shall we neck? <laughs> <laughs> I took up like a darn fool. You know? 
Imagine, huh? But seriously, Jack, this building represents the last word in scientific advancement. It certainly does. It's a testimonial to the ingenuity of 20th century communications. That's right. It's a tribute to modern engineering and a milestone in the progress of radio. Yes, Don. And in a couple of hours, Fred Allen will be on the air and prove that all this was in vain. <laughs> You know, Don, Alan's program is the only major Bose unit I ever saw that never went anyplace. <laughs> but getting back to the dedication of this building, I think that... Uh... Right this way, folks. Follow me, everybody. This is Studio A. Hmm. A sightseeing tour right in the middle of the program. Now, folks, let me call your attention to this beautiful auditorium. Note the apple green walls, the vivid orange drapes, and the big blue eyes of our master of ceremony. <laughs> now listen, buddy, we're right in the middle of a broadcast. Quiet, please. <laughs> this room can seat 325 people, or 650 if they want to cuddle. Now look, buddy. Are there any questions, please? Uh, yes, what time does the bus leave for Petaluma? Mary, come here, will you? <laughs> Now, stick around. We're on the air. Okay. See you later, Abercrombie. Now, follow me, folks, and we'll proceed to Studio B. If you get lonesome, Mary, I'll be down the hall. <laughs> Mary, what's the idea of following that guide around on a sightseeing tour? I dropped my handkerchief, and, and he, he won't, won't give, give it, it back, back to me. me. <laughs> I know. Oh. You know, Jack, I went all through the building, and it sure is gorgeous. Ha, <laughs> you're telling me. Yes, uh, Mary, Jack was remarking about the beautiful girls that run the elevators. You think they're something? You ought to see the cute fellow that runs a freight elevator. He looks just like Cesar Romero. Cesar Romero? Yeah. When I got on, he said, up, down, or shall we rumba? <laughs> well, that is service. How'd you happen to come up on the freight elevator anyway? I got a hot tip from a girlfriend of mine. <laughs> oh, I'll have to ride down with that guy. I want to brush up on my Charleston. <laughs> Of course, NBC is so... <laughs> NBC is so commercial, he'll probably charge me 10 cents a dance, you know. What do you mean, commercial? NBC is paying all of our expenses while we're here in San Francisco. They are? Yes. <laughs> They're paying for all our food, taxis, and entertainment. They are? <laughs> And they're even paying our hotel bills. Well, that settles it. I'm going to get a room tonight. <laughs> Mary, Mary, are, are you sure NBC is paying for our food, too? Of course. Well, why don't somebody tell me these things? I've, I've been here two days. How do I know how much food I've had? Very simple. Just take the sandwiches you brought up from Los Angeles and subtract the ones you didn't eat. <laughs> Mary, I only packed a couple of sandwiches, and I ate them on the train. It's a long trip, and I got hungry. Well, if you were hungry, why didn't you eat in the diner? The diner? Yeah, you ought to go in one sometime. They got tables and waiters and everything. <laughs> I know, I know. Where do you think I get my toothpicks on the train? <laughs> I wish I'd have known about NBC paying our expenses, though. You know, in the first place... Right this way, folks! Follow me, everybody! This is Studio A! Hmm, this is getting to be now, awesome. Let me call your attention to this beautiful auditorium. Note the apple green walls, the vivid orange drapes, and the old gray wig on our master of <laughs> <laughs> Now, just a minute, buddy. Buddy's my brother. I'm Abercrombie. <laughs> I don't care who you are. I don't want you interrupting in the middle of a broadcast. Quiet, please. <laughs> there are 300 people now seated in the studio, folks. 25 walked out since I was here last. <laughs> That's a lie. Now, beat it, will you? Are there any questions, please? Yes, when do we get to Chinatown? Oh, Dennis. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Benny. <laughs> that terrific applause you just heard, folks, is breaking Benny's heart. Oh, get out of here, will you? Fresh guy. Say, Mr. Benny, I was out in front of the building just now, and you know that... Oh, hello. Hello, Dennis. Uh, having a good time up here? Well, but I'm a little lonely. Lonely? Uh, that's too bad. Say, Mr. Benny, I was out in front of the building just now, and you know that big... What are you, uh... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What, uh... What do you mean, lonely? 
Didn't you call that telephone number I gave you? Yeah, but a girl answered, so I hung up. <laughs> you, you hung up? I like to play hard to get. <laughs> well, that makes sense, but only to you. Say, Mr. Benny, I was out in front of the building just now, and you know that big mural they got there? That's got all different colors? Yes. Well, the booklet says it's got 1,752,812 individual pieces of tile in it. That's a lie. <laughs> How do you know? I counted them. <laughs> you counted them? I never saw anyone so suspicious. Well, it's your own fault, Jack. Dennis wasn't the least bit cynical till he came to work for you. What do you mean? Every payday, you make him guess which walnut shell his salary's under. <laughs> Well, certainly, I just make a game out of it. I hope I win pretty soon. I gotta have a toothpick. <laughs> oh, has a tooth been bothering you, Dennis? Let's have a look at it. You can't fix it here. Wait till after the program. <laughs> I wasn't fixing. I was looking. Oh, Jenny, dear. Well, Dennis... <laughs> Dennis! <laughs> Oh, we're nuts. It's the end of the season, you know. Uh, Dennis, I think, uh, I think we're about ready for a musical salute to this new building, so let's have your number. Okay. Wait a minute. I better test that new microphone before you sing, see if it's all right. Hello, Mac. Hello, Steve. <laughs> testing. Testing. Hello, Mac. Hello, Steve. Hello, Dirk. <laughs> Well, it's working all right. Go ahead, sing, kid. You are always in my heart Even though you're far away I can hear the music of the song of love I sang with you. You are always in my heart, and when skies above are gray, I remember that you care, and then and there the sun breaks through. Just before I go to sleep, there's a rendezvous I keep And the dream I always meet Helps me forget where far apart I don't know exactly when, dear, But I'm sure we'll meet again, dear. And my darling, till we do You are always in my heart just before I go to sleep, there's a rendezvous I keep, and the dream I always meet helps me forget where far apart. I don't know exactly when, but I'm sure we'll meet again. And my dog. in my heart sung by Dennis Day. And just think, Dennis, that's the first song to, en to emanate. <laughs> a bad word a monkey with there, too. And just think, Dennis, that's the first song to emanate from this new building. Huh? Emanate? That's a hot one. <laughs> what? What do you mean, that's a hot one? How that got by the censors, I'll never know. <laughs> What are you talking about? I've been around. I've been around. Oh, be quiet. <laughs> Silly guy. No use postponing it. I got to have a talk with that kid. <laughs> and now, folks, in the first one. Right this way, folks. Follow me, everybody. This is Studio A. Well, here we go again. 
Folks, let me call your attention to the apple green walls, the vivid orange drapes, and the pink elephants skipping about in the orchestra. <laughs> now, buddy, for the last time... Quiet, please. Uh, well, any questions, please? Yes, where's Phil Harris, my favorite band leader? <laughs> All right, Mike Bro, come over here. What a reception. Thank heavens I'm not egotistical. <laughs> uh, we had a rehearsal on that word egotistical. You know? <laughs> not Come on, much. Phil. We're waiting for you. He's got a program to do. Now beat it. Okay. Follow me, folks. Nothing's going to happen here anyway. <laughs> I'm going to report that guy. Well, well, expectant. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> it's going to be a father in a couple of days, you know. Well, I've been trying to get hold of you all day. Where are you stopping? Well, Frankie, my guitar player, and me checked in at the Fairmont. We got the bridal suite. <laughs> the bridal suite, eh? How do you like it? Not so hot. Last night, Frankie married the chambermaid, and I had to sleep in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that Frankie has finally settled down. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh... I must send his bride some sort of a wedding present. Don't send her no mop. She's got eight of them already. <laughs> oh, well, maybe I'll send her a nice galvanized pail or something. I'll have it monogrammed. What's her name, Phil? I don't know. Hey, Frankie, what's her name? I don't know. Hey, Phil! Never mind! Forget it! <laughs> I'll just send her a plain pail. <laughs> And incidentally, Phil, just because NBC is paying your expenses in San Francisco, you don't have to splurge on a suite. Gee, is NBC paying Mr. Harris's expenses up here? Yes, Dennis. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Are they paying mine, too? Yes, yes, Dennis. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Then let you and I check out of that all-night movie. Don't worry, Dennis. We're moving over to the Palace Hotel. Can we get a bridal suite, too? Well, yes, if the hotel is crowded. I wish I had my hope chest here. My silk pajamas are in it. <laughs> oh, sure. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as I started to announce, for our feature attraction this evening, the Benny Fisherman's Wharf isn't the only thing around here that smells, player. <laughs> will present an original drama in honor of this new NBC building. Now, it isn't common knowledge, but approximately 100 years ago, on the very spot where this great edifice now stands, there was a little gambling house and dance hall known as the Happy Hour Tea Room. Yes, sir. <laughs> the Happy Hour Tea Room? Well, how'd they get that name? A guy ordered tea there once, and the bouncer slapped him till he was happy. <laughs> So for our play this evening, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to reenact a scene that took place on this very spot over 90 years ago. Now, I will be the proprietor of the happy hour, that famous gambler, Jack Ace Hawkins. <laughs> You're going to be a gambler? Yeah, sure. Why not? You wouldn't bet $4 that Oakland Bridge goes to Oakland. <laughs> I'll take that bet, sister. <laughs> not a gambler, eh? Anyway, Mary, in our play, you're going to be Lulu Davenport, my sweetheart. Oh, fine. Who is madly in love with a handsome young bartender. Oh, fine. <laughs> hmm. Looks like. <clears throat> the part, um, the part of the bartender will be played by Phil Harris. Phil, here's a book on how to mix drinks. Are you kidding? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Now, Dennis, you're going to be an old prospector. You think you can do it? I'm starving, I tell you, sir. That was last week. <laughs> now, Don, Don Wilson. Yes, Jack. Don, we want some authentic San Francisco atmosphere, so you're going to play the part of Knob Hill. <laughs> Lay down. Or lie down, rather. I'm sorry, Morty. Lie down. And now, folks, this thrilling and nostalgic drama of yesteryear will go on immediately after. I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. Oh, hello, Rochester. Where are you? I'm calling from Oakland, boss. I'm stopping with friends here. Well, it's about time you called. 
I've been trying to locate you for two days. I just ran across myself, myself. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? Well, you see, I was born in Oakland, boss. Uh-huh. And ever since I got here Friday, things have been delightfully out of focus. <laughs> I can imagine. Now, Rochester, you work for me, don't you? Yes, sir. In other words, your job is not to be in Oakland, but here in San Francisco at my hotel. Is that correct? Yes, sir. You're supposed to unpack my bags, press my clothes, and answer the phone. Now, what happened? First time the phone rang, it was for me. <laughs> well, listen, Rochester, you come over to my hotel immediately. We're leaving for Los Angeles tomorrow, and I don't want you to miss that train. That's why I called you, boss. Can I spend the week up here? You see, next Wednesday is my birthday. Next Wednesday is your birthday? Rochester, if I remember correctly, you celebrated your birthday about a month ago. I did? <laughs> yes, you did. Well, you can take my word for this, boss. I'm blushing. <laughs> you better blush. And I'll watch you on that train tomorrow afternoon. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? Does Miss Livingston need a new maid or something? A new maid? No, not that I know of. Okay, so long. I'll think of something, honey. <laughs> Rochester! Rochester, who are you talking to? Every time I take that guy somewhere, I can never find him. Play, Phil. <laughs> played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Phil, I want to congratulate you on the way the boys are all dressed up for this great occasion. Yeah, ain't they natty? Natty is right. They're all shaved. Every one of them. How'd that happen? One of the boys ran across a lady barber down the street. <laughs> I know there must have been an added attraction there somewhere. And now, ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> you know, fellas, Jack used to go with a lady barber in Waukegan. Oh, forget it, will you? <laughs> they were even engaged to be married till a terrible thing happened. <laughs> Mary, I said forget it. No, no, no. What happened, Mary? One day she slapped a hot towel on Jack's face and then picked his pocket. <laughs> the dirtiest trick I ever had played on me. And now, ladies and gentlemen, there I was in the chair never dreaming that, <laughs> that Christina was a crook. <laughs> but it looks like. And now, ladies and gentlemen, all right, so I pay for my haircuts now. Who cares? <laughs> For our feature attraction this evening, we present a saga of the early days in San Francisco entitled Jack Ace Hawkins' Revenge, or he didn't mean to kill her, but he doed it. <laughs> Thanks, Red. Uh, take it, Mr. Uh... <laughs> take it, Mr. Wilson. The time, ladies and gentlemen, is April in the year of 1849. The scene, the office of Jack Ace Hawkins at the Happy Hour Gambling Emporium. Curtain, music. <laughs> I had enough of this. Take that. And that. Those gull darn flies annoy me. Shoo. Another killing. You're the meanest man in these parts, Jack Ace. <laughs> Just make that ace. I'll feel more comfortable. 
How's business tonight, Lulu? Pretty slow. Someone poured molasses in the roulette wheel. Doggone things sure have been tough lately. Come in. Got some news for you, Ace. Got some news for you. <laughs> you have? Yep. They just discovered gold at Sutter's Mill. Gold at Sutter's Mill? How do you know? I read it in Herb Kane's column. <laughs> That boy sure gets around. You hear that, Lulu? A gold rush. Come on, let's go out and mingle with the customers. And I'm going to make a fortune tonight, or my name ain't Jack... Jack Ace Hawkins. <laughs> Doggone, I gotta change that name. What am I? <laughs> we lose more darn piano players that way. Look at that crowd of prospectors. They all got gold. I'm going to trim the suckers, Lulu, and buy you an emerald as big as my fist. Well, make it a good one this time. The last one you bought me said seven up on it. <laughs> no worry. Hey, Curly, give me a drink, will you? Okay, Ace, what'll it be? Lemon phosphate. Put a Mickey in it to kill the taste. <laughs> How's the business, Curly? How you doing? Fine. With this sticky beer on my fingers, I'm taking in more than you are. You better watch yourself, Curly. There's one thing I can't stand. It's a crook. Hey, uh, partner, how about a little service here? Well, it'd be, Slim. I'll have a dish of Jello with that new locked-in flavor. Jello? You want it straight or with sliced banana? Straight. Mm. <laughs> men were men in those days, folks. <laughs> hey, stranger, I see you got a big bag of gold dust there. How'd you like to play a little stud poker with me? Oh, thanks. I'd rather dance with Lulu. Well, either way, we can't lose. Go ahead. <laughs> Pardon me, mister. I'm looking for Ace Hawkins, the famous crook. <laughs> That's gambler. I'm Ace Hawkins. What can I do for you? Well, I just got in from Sutter's Mill and I'm loaded. <laughs> you know where I can double my money? I sure do, partner. Sit right down here at this table. I'll teach you how a little play a little game called high card. Okay, here, bartender. Hold my yo-yo. <laughs> hmm. Now, this is for a hundred dollars. We both cut and a high card win. Go ahead, what's your card? Seven of diamonds. Hmm. What's yours? Seven and a half of diamonds. <laughs> I win. Shall we try it again? Sure, that was a close one. <laughs> okay, this for another hundred. Go ahead, take a card. What is it? Charlie Kendall, Greystone, eight, seven hundred. <laughs> How did that get in there? Take another one. Okay. What do you got? Holy smoke! Well, what is it? The zero of hearts. You win again. <laughs> That's 200. Now, I'll tell you what, stranger. Let's cut the card just once more for all the gold you got. What do you say? Okay, but I want to keep my yo-yo. <laughs> Fair enough. This time, I'll take a card first. Hmm, I got the jack club. What's yours, stranger? Well, what's your card? There's something wrong here. I got an ace. And Ace, why, well, you're nothing but a low-down thieving chief. I'm a-taking your gold, stranger, and I'm a-taking it right now. Oh, no, you don't. Watch out, partner. He's got a gun. Yes, and I'm going to use it. Now, give me that gold, stranger. Right this or way, I'll... folks. It's the studio A. This program came to you from San Francisco. This is the National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles, Earl C. Anthony Incorporated, Packard Distributors. Keep up morale with lovely hands. Protect nails and polish with seal coat. Liquid nails and polish with seal coat.